My name is Kamlesh Pandya. I, I drive an Audi Q3. I've had it for three years now. First registered in 2019. And uh, I'm very pleased with the car. I've done about almost 19,000 miles now. The car is a um, two liter engine. It's 1955cc actually. It, it is fully automatic. Um, although there are option of actually m moving to manual if you want to. I'm paying £506 a month for this car at the moment and my deposit I paid was £5,000. Average mileage I get per gallon from driving long distance and high speed is around 38-39 miles per gallon. If I'm driving within the urban area, within the city, then it's about 30 miles to go. You have an option of actually including service as part of your lease also. Uh, which uh, I did when I had the previous cars. And with this car, actually, I bought a different separate service plan because I realized that, that the newer cars require less servicing. And as a result, actually buying a service plan was cheaper for me than to actually pay extra amount uh, together with the lease of the car. I paid £400 for, three, for the four years and that includes every service that I have to do within those four years. That's it? That's it. For four years. For four years. And up to how many kilometers? But that doesn't matter. The computer in the car will tell me when the service is due, right? And when it's due, I take it into the garage and they do the service. Oil service or whether it's just normal service, you know, or brake service, whatever it is, they will do that service. That AMC, the oh. service package, mm. does it include parts as well as the labor or does no so parts? It, so that's, that's where the complication comes in. It includes all the labor and it includes some parts. So for example, if it's just an oil service, they will, they will supply the oil and replace the oil. If it, however, requires uh, brake pads changing or the tires need replacing, then I have to pay for that. So. Uh, yeah, the air conditioning filters, air conditioning service, all that is done as part of the normal service. And only 400 pounds. I think insurance in, in this country, in the UK, has actually been going up quite a lot. Um, due to, um, mainly due to people who are not insured and their cars are getting involved in accidents and insurance companies having to pay out the, the third party effectively. So people who are actually paying insurance are being penalized for that. My car insurance in this car is 340 pounds a year. Partly, it's cheap, it's cheap considerably because uh, I've accumulated uh, a full, what they call no claims bonus. So I've not actually had a claim against any insurance company for the last eight years uh, or more. The insurance, I've, I've actually got fully comprehensive cover, includes my wife's driving also. When you buy a car, you have to have an insurance to drive that car. So you are taking out the insurance. As part of the insurance, you're taking out the insurance for you to drive that car. It also covers any third party fire and theft. So technically, if your car gets involved in an accident with a third party, you're actually covered for the cost of repairing their car. It covers a fire if the car happens to get into fire or theft if it's, if it's stolen. The other thing, because my car is comprehensive, even if I was at fault, my car would still get repaired because my car is fully, uh, is fully comprehensive insurance on it. Okay. That's for damage to the car or if I'm involved in an accident. That's what it covers. Right? It doesn't cover the actual uh, engine you know, failure or mechanical failure. or, or any, That is all done through a warranty of, of, the, of, the, of the company. The engine normally actually doesn't get covered by your personal insurance. Your personal insurance is all about your, you but okay. personally, not the car. So what about the car insurance then? The car insurance is not comes under the warranty. So I actually have an Audi warranty. Now that's where the three year and a four year lease comes into a um, equation where you actually have to think about whether you want a three year lease or four year lease. So my car actually, the new cars, Audi in particular, will come with three year warranty for everything. And apart from the tires, so the normal wear and tear is not covered. Uh, any, any covered. So if I, since I've taken a four-year lease on this car, for the final year, I've actually had to buy an extended warranty. So I, I've actually had the option to pay for that. Uh, and in fact, it's coming up due now. 
There are, there are different ways of buying a car. You can either take a bank loan and pay it outright and then own the car yourself, or you can actually buy a car on a personal lease plan, which, um, which means that you would only pay a certain amount of deposit uh, towards the car, and you buy it either for a three-year or a four-year lease, and then you pay monthly amount. So every month you actually pay a certain fee to the garage for the car. I actually used to drive an Audi Q5 beforehand, um, so I considered something similar to an Audi Q5, uh, and, but a little bit smaller than the Q5. The main reason for that was tax reasons. In this country, a car worth over £50,000 at the time uh, actually equated to a lot more tax that you had to pay. So Q3 came in at just under um, 50000 whereas Q5, if had I replaced my previous Q5, would have been more than that, which means I would have had to pay a lot of tax. That was one of the considerations. When I test drove this Q3, I didn't see much difference between this Q3 and the old Q5 that I had in terms of size, in terms of you know driving, um, in terms of capacity in the back seat, front seat, everything seemed you know, the same to me. Right? So the only thing that was different was the boot was slightly smaller, but that's the only thing that was different, which I actually, um, you know, sold it to me saying Q3 is, is worth it um, for, the, for less money. The other car that I did look at uh, potentially getting was a BMW X3, which is similar to a Q5. But that, again, I faced the same issue of tax. Um, so that was really discarded as a result of that. And secondly, it's, it's because the, the BMW garage was not willing to offer me the deal that Audi garage was actually offering me. That actually was a decider for me. There are, there are different ways of buying a car. You can either take a bank loan and pay it outright and then own the car yourself, or you can actually buy a car on a personal lease plan, which, um, which means that you would only pay a certain amount of deposit uh, towards the car, and you buy it either for a three-year or a four-year lease, and then you pay monthly amount. So every month you actually pay a certain fee to the garage for the car. And at the end of your lease period, you actually have an option of swapping that car for another new car, uh, and at that time, they work out the value of the car, current car based on the mileage you've done, condition of the car, etc. And any equity you have built up in that car, you actually swap it for a newer car. Where when you have a um, the lease plan, you you agree with the company how many miles you're going to do per year. So, say for example, I had agreed to do 10,000 miles on, on this car. I had gone over 30,000 miles, I would have had to pay extra money for it. So mileage charge, but that's that's nominal, about 10 pence, 10 pence a mile. Well, and the advantage of this plan is that if you want to, at the end of the three years, buy the car, car outright, the value of the car is determined at that time, and then you can just pay off what they call the, the final payment, and you can own the car. It's a better option for me is at the end of the lease, I could then swap for another car and, and um, you know, use the equity from this car onto that car, and then carry on paying monthly amount again. So it's like hiring a car really effectively uh, with an option of buying it at the end. But if, I'd got, if I had got a loan from a, from a bank and paid that off, right, it would have been around the same amount. It actually would have been a bit more than that because the loan would have been a full amount of £49,000, whereas this one is actually not the full amount. It's, it's a less amount because the lump sum at the end is still outstanding effectively. So, you know, what the value of the car would be at the end of three or four years. It helps me to lease because the, if I keep the condition of the car well and I, I keep under the mileage that I've agreed, the car will maintain its equity and the value. And that equity is what helps me buy my next car and pays towards the next car as well. And then I can have another new car. If you like my review, please do a like subscribe and share thank you so much thanks a lot